and today is the day yes the day we've been waiting for it's induction day it is december 28th it's like four o'clock right now and i'm gonna be calling the doctor in an hour or the hospital in an hour to make sure they have a room available for us and then we go in so what we've been doing is getting everything ready making sure we have everything that we need double checking triple checking checking in with other people to make sure we got the right <laughs> stuff and getting the house ready i spent the morning cleaning just doing a final clean washed yep. our sheets mopped the floors did just all the laundry everything. No, yeah was not our necessary laundry baskets but are empty <laughs> but yeah so we i just wanted to come home to a clean house and not have to worry about that so that yes. is all done and we also got Stella's, our little boxer, <laughs> her stuff ready because she obviously will be, we won't be here to yeah. take care of her. So we'll have to drop her off at her Tia's house. <laughs> yeah, she's going to my sister's house to spend a few nights there. So yes, it's all just preparation and mentally preparing ourselves um i'm getting so emotional yes because obviously you've seen the videos you know the long journey that we've been through <laughs> to um, get to this point to get to this exact point where we're at so so yeah right now we are about to head to my sister's house we're gonna load up the car head to my sister's house and drop stella off and then call the doctor so tag along and see you soon. Let's get it. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Kirsten and I have a scheduled induction for 6 p.m. and I'm just making the hour ahead phone call to see. Wait one second, please. Okay. What if they don't have any beds open? Nothing available until 8 p.m. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you guys freaking yeah. jinxed it. You said 8 o'clock. You said 8 o'clock. Oh my god. Oh my what? gosh. He's so not going to okay. be born until the 30th. No. Well, we have to wait a few more hours now. So yeah, that kind of changed our plans a little bit for our night. Uh, a little delay a lot of people are having babies right now so they got to clear the rooms out and then hopefully it'll be our turn so we stopped and got some food pot stickers we are at a Chinese restaurant so we're just and you've been going here for like since you're a kid yeah since I was a kid I've gone here with my dad and it's really good. It's like the best Chinese food I've ever had. Isn't it really good? It's good, yeah. <laughs> um, it's your last meal before you go into labor. Yeah, my last meal, hopefully, before we have a baby. But I'm, we're just trying to kill time right now. And we call back in two hours. Hopefully they have those babies delivered and rooms cleared out for us because <laughs> we're next yes and we're ready i know i don't want to go part. back home but yeah so we'll keep you updated when i call back at eight o'clock so this is attempt number two it is what time 752 they you can't, can't see it, it. it's 752 um, we're gonna give it another try and see if we can get a room and hopefully we're lucky Labor and Delray, this is 
is Maggie. Hi, um, I was supposed to be induced earlier and I'm just calling back to check in. Okay, what's the name? Kirsten. All right, hang on one second. Okay. You've been waiting. This is killer. The suspense. I know. You can come at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock? Okay, sounds yeah. great. Thank you. Okay, yeah, bye. Bye. So, <laughs> that's good. Woo! I mean, we expected to go in today, which is good. Yes. Um, but at 9 is go time. We're going to have a long night. Woo! It really is. We expected to be there like at 6. six to get things started, but no, it's... we'll get started at like maybe 11 they'll start the medicine. We'll see. I don't know, but we're going to be Yay! here all night. We're having a baby! <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. We'll keep you updated and we'll yes. start recording once we get there pretty much. Yay! They just put in a what's called cervical ripening gel basically so they put it up against my cervix to help soften it and get it ready to start Coming. softening and dilating <laughs> um, it'll be in for up to 12 hours so around 11 a.m. we will be taking it out unless we take it out sooner because she said sometimes it can just cause people to go into labor and to have contractions and then they would take it out everybody's but, different yeah so now we really just wait and see we're gonna try and get some rest i'm gonna take my makeup off and get comfortable and try and get some sleep now it's just the waiting game and we see how my body reacts to it a fun fact is that our nurse Erica, our nurse who's been doing everything pretty much, mm -hmm. um, she kind of whispers, she's like, so, uh, I, I see you, you did <laughs> IVF. Or like, uh, yeah, we did. She's like, so did I. Yeah, <laughs> so we were having fun talking about like both of our experiences yes. and talking all about it. And her baby is four months old now after doing IVF. So it's just fun meeting other people who have they someone will. who has something so much in common yes. with you so it was really fun talking with her we talked for like 45 minutes almost while we were doing the pre-questions and getting the IV in and everything now it Yet, is the waiting game now it's the waiting game time to get comfy and try and get some rest yes so we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back with another update when we have one yeah we don't know when it'll be hopefully this just puts me into labor and I don't have to have it in for 12 hours, <laughs> but we'll see.
it is almost 2 30 and i've slept for like an hour or so i think i just threw up a ton i don't know why if it's from this gel or not but it was not great I'm gonna try and go back to sleep. Good morning. It is almost 11 o'clock, so I guess almost afternoon now. Um, we're just getting up and moving. They wanted to keep the um, cervical ripening gel in for the 12, full 12 hours just for it to do its job. And they just checked my cervix, and unfortunately, it didn't really do much to my cervix. I have been having contractions. I haven't really been feeling them all night, but they said that I've been having them. So that's a good sign, but my cervix is still the same. So she went to go let the doctor know and see what the doctor wants to do because I don't think right now we can start Pitocin if my cervix isn't where they want it to be it's like one it's one centimeter and like 60 or 70 percent thin and they want it to be more than that so we will see what the next steps are and i'll give you an update i got a menu so i can order breakfast and hopefully keep it down and yeah i'll give you an update when the nurse gets back trigger contractions basically they are going to start that in i think like 30 minutes they're gonna start me on tiny dosages um and give it to me every two hours for three doses probably on the second dose they're gonna like hit you hard you're like no i don't want any more of that stuff <laughs> <laughs> but i have to yeah but yeah so it's it'll be 12 something when we get that started and we'll just see how i progress <laughs> just now getting started with inducing basically um because the what we had in for 12 hours overnight didn't change my cervix at all this is what my doctor wanted to do now which was take the pill just to activate more contractions basically i've been having them but not they're not strong and this will help get everything rolling so it's december 29th and baby boy will not be here today for the most part he'll be here probably early in the morning tomorrow the 30th so we have a long day ahead of us at 3 30 they're gonna come back in and give me more just to see what kind of contractions i'm having and then give me the next dose of the medicine i also took tylenol because i can feel myself i have a small headache again so took tylenol to help beat that and just gonna relax and rest a little bit right now 
before I can't anymore. So it's 4.30 now. The nurse just came in. I was supposed to get my second dose of the medicine at 3.30, but it's 4.30 now. But she came in and said that my contractions are close enough together that they are not going to give me any more medicine because they don't want them to be too close together. Um, so that's good news. We're on the right track now. She said that she's going to continue to monitor me and if my contraction, if they get spaced out, then they'll give me another dose. But right now, we're looking good. Josh says hi. <laughs> I'm on the yoga ball, just trying to help get things moving around. But yeah, I'm about to get... We're about to get Chick-fil-A from my sister and my brother-in-law, Jade and Luis. So thank you for that. That will probably be my last meal for today. So yeah, just waiting. six um the nurse susie has already came in uh she talked to us sophie i thought it was susie either way she came in uh she's the one who gave kirsten the medicine to get her going and she came back in she's been keeping track of her contractions because that's what she does out there um she said they're very close together so they're not able to give her any medication as of right now because of that reason because the contractions are too close together um she said they're gonna wait a little bit and maybe she can go naturally without any more medicine or if the contractions start to calm down and tone down a little bit they start to spread out or to be less intense i guess um then they'll proceed with further medicine um, but she feels them. She feels them coming. So we have an update. A couple updates. So the first one, around 7 o'clock, they checked my cervix again. And um, unfortunately, it hasn't, it hasn't moved at all much. It's like still at a one and some wiggle room, she said. A one and some. So not really a lot of progress. So then the plan was to put in more of the cervical gel that we had in last night and then that would be in for 12 hours. So we would be spending another night, another night until morning. And then checking to see if things are moving along, which I was really not happy about just because spending another night and then not knowing if that's even going to do anything again. But then she just came in. Um, she had me on IV fluids to try and slow my contractions because I've still been having contractions that are really close together. And but you're not that dilated. Yeah, and it, but it's not dilating me at all. It's not, they're not doing anything yet. But then she just came in and said there's a change of plans because when she put the IV in me, baby's heart rate had a couple of descends, is that the word? Yes. So it dropped a little bit, not to a worry, but a little bit that they noticed, like hey, where they it noticed, is yeah, dipping a little bit. So and something. that that was one of the risks with his um, umbilical cord is that labor will affect his heart rate. So that is they're they're just keeping a close eye on us and monitoring us closely, which is good. But that's why they're like, well, we're going to just start you on Pitocin now instead of waiting. But they're going to be giving it to her in a smaller dose through the IV. So yeah. if it does not tolerate the Pitocin right away and it decel baby. the baby yeah. decels a little bit or dips a little bit on his heart rate, then they're able to stop the IV mm -hmm. right then and there instead of 
like or, continuing or on. Yeah. Yeah. So. So they're gonna start usually when you start pitocin, they start you at a two, but they're gonna start me at a one, and then every hour minutes. or thirty minutes. Every thirty minutes. They're gonna increase it, but they're just gonna start it slowly and Monitor. keep a close eye on baby's heart rate and. And she said, if that doesn't do anything or if it does if he well, does not tolerate it yeah. and he's they see the little dips again then we'll have to figure something else out they said there's yeah. a lot of options available uh, but this is what they're gonna do so it's technically them jumping the gun a little bit for with Pitocin to speed up the yeah, process just cuz usually they don't start Pitocin if I'm not, not dilated, dilated enough <clears throat> but they're going to just because of that happening so we're hoping for the best and that yes. his heart rate doesn't drop and that this just gets things going i'm shaky so shaky right now from jittery jittery from everything but the iv maybe she said she's going to be more uncomfortable contractions she's going to feel a lot more mm -hmm. but it's for a benefit for the yeah. baby yeah so so yeah, it is 8.40 right now, 8.40 p.m. and... They're just getting approval from the pharmacy to bring the Pitocin in and it's time to get going. So another long night. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, we'll keep you guys updated through the night. bed she is on the sofa um, her back has been hurting a lot I don't blame her I actually feel like the couch is is softer than this hospital bed now being on it um, but the contractions are hitting a little bit harder and it's not crazy for her like crazy painful but it's just enough to make her uncomfortable and not be able to sleep um so she had an option of benadryl or morphine and they're gonna give her a small dose of morphine um nothing affects the baby everything is fine so it's just to help her sleep to help her relax a little bit and so she can ignore the pain a little bit um because tomorrow it is go time and she needs as much rest as she can get for now so she is on her way with some morphine okay so update quite a bit has happened it is 4 20 in the morning um we haven't really been sleeping so around 2 in the morning 2 30 they upped her dose of pitocin so once they did that her contraction started to come a lot more stronger her she's not really good at pain levels but she said her contractions were at a five before after they upped the dose a little bit more just after two in the morning um she was feeling like her contractions were feeling more like around at a seven um so they were a lot more painful she is struggling she can't get comfortable um she gets a little bit dizzy feels like throwing up sometimes she's getting hot um the nurse said that's just how she how her body is dealing with the pain um that's just how it's reacting so right now her contractions are still steady and everything is just really painful so the next part so what they did next um, is that she got fentanyl through her IV, uh, which is still safe for the baby as well. So she just took that. It will last about an hour to help her contractions to get some rest.
Do you want to maybe talk to the camera a little bit? No. Oh. Check how much she's dilated at in about an hour, like around 7, 7.30. Um, but she is about to get an epidural. So I finally got the epidural and that was a lifesaver. It got really rough after my water broke. It was like super intense and everything happened so fastly. So I'm very happy to have the epidural now and I'm going to going to try and get some sleep just because we barely slept all night since I was having contractions all night and they just checked me and I'm four centimeters dilated now and all that happened within an hour and a half yeah within an hour and a half pretty much or two hours because my water broke at 5 30 in the morning and then I got the epidural at 6 30 so yeah an hour so you went from a two to a four and you surprised the nurse and the doctor mm -hmm, i did and now they set up our the delivery table where they're gonna put the placenta and everything my sister's here jade she made it she's gonna <laughs> be here for the delivery so we'll see maybe this afternoon he will be here Okay, I'm updating you guys because Josh is sleeping. <laughs> um, so it's, what time? 9.30. They checked her a little after seven and she was at a four. They just checked her again and now she's a nine and a half. Okay, so the doctors were coming in so I had to stop recording. So she's nine and a half. Um, she can feel a lot of pressure. She was on a very low dose of Pitocin, but they stopped that because um, the baby's heart rate was dipping just a little bit. So they want to make sure that he's happy. So they repositioned her and um, they are just trying to have him come down a little bit more. And her contractions right now are about four minutes apart. So they're waiting to hopefully try to get them a little closer together. So when she pushes that it's not that long of a wait in between contractions for her to push. So she's going to come back in in like 15 minutes and hopefully we'll have a baby soon. How do you guys feel? I can't believe we're about to have a baby. Josh Sorry, finally woke up. <laughs> yeah. I know we just woke him up and I was in this position and he's like, what? He's like, I don't remember them doing that. I was like, yeah, you were sleeping. <laughs>
got this. All right. Big breath in and push. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go, 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 go,